coming through. Yeah. <laughs> I'm listening. Thanks, Bill. Hello, everyone. Hello. Thank you so much for coming on this rainy, rainy, miserable day. Okay. I believe this is the first time we're in the single digits in uh, this fall. So, I am going to try to ignite you, no, I will ignite you, I'm pretty good at that, to uh, start your business. This is, um, you know, 12 sessions in, the last session, give yourself a pat on the back. I, I know some of you have been coming to every single one, which is so awesome, and you're doing so well for your business. You're working on your business instead of in your business, which is fantastic. So, skills that spark a great career. So what we're going to go over is um, getting and staying focused, knowing your numbers, because that's really important, keeping yourself accountable to your goals, and uh, preparing for your business future. accomplished over these 12 weeks? Um, yes, Kathy? Great habit. Yeah? Legion. Oh, amazing. Asking for referrals. Oh, that's amazing. So you've been... Writing it down. Uh, excellent. Um, so you've been in those uh, telephone calls, in Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, for two hours of lead generating. And you found that you're looking forward to them now, I hope. It's almost like that thing that you're, you thought it was a big deal. Like, how did, you, how did you go about it at first? Was it a big deal for you to make those phone calls? Uh, for me, yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah. yeah. It was just uh, what to say, following scripts. Yeah. And it's good to have scripts, so learning and practicing the scripts prior. Mm -hmm. um, and I had reasons to call for open houses or whatever, just like, so it wasn't a cold call per se, but a warm call. Mm -hmm. And um, and as you do them, it gets easier. Mm -hmm. At the, near the end, it's like, I have to do it, it's my job. Yeah, <laughs> think, yeah. exactly, right? Like, yeah. as if you were employed, yeah. you're on a team, but like, you're, yeah. you're employed, you're an hourly worker, or but you're not. But it's something that you have to do day in and day out. Get used to it, like it, and so. But I think that doing that, I found things out about myself, what I'm comfortable with and not, and mm -hmm. how to work around it, how to not take things personally if they hang up or whatnot. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for sharing. Who else? Kevin. Uh. Well, what, what you've accomplished, what you've accomplished thus far in these 12 sessions. Start, started talk like a realtor. Amazing. <laughs> Finally. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> that's a good, that's a big deal, yeah. Yeah. Well, I uh, never, I never thought of uh, calling people and talk to people, asking for referrals and go out meeting people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And start to accomplish those. Mm -hmm. and getting to know more people and more connections. Awesome. Tashi? What I gained from this course is uh, like I was probably thinking more about being an entrepreneur this mm -hmm. mindset, but now it seems like I'm thinking, questioning more about why and being purposeful. Mm -hmm. like, to think why I think can take you higher than as compared to having some sort of like a small rule and how you know the purpose of why you're in business. So that is one of the most important thing that you can take out from this course. Wonderful. So that's an accomplishment for sure. So thinking your big why and, and having you guide that for sure. Um, and um, James, can I can I ask? <laughs> you're avoiding eye contact, but I, I have to know. <laughs> There's a lot, and I mean, Ignite is so much content packed into such a short period of time, which I think is extremely valuable, but if there's anything that's, anything that stuck with me, it was the subconscious aspect 
mm -hmm. of the course, where it just even the slightest shift in your mindset can result in the biggest changes in your actions. So just the habit of coming day in and day out changes when you might have done A on one day, you start to do B on the next, mm -hmm. which in the long run might be the difference between you know succeeding in real estate and not. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Does that make sense? <laughs> oh, for sure it makes sense. And definitely mindset is one of the things that they try to target in this course for sure. Um, anybody else want to share? Okay, what about the wins and opportunities to make adjustments? Um, I know when I took this course first, my biggest thing was, I think I, I would have to agree with you, it's going from the very entrepreneurial mindset to, uh, okay, this is actually a nine to five job. You need to time block, you need to schedule. And I had to definitely wrap my head around that. And it, did, it took me two ignites to do it. Took me two ignites and a bold to actually do that. But it was definitely an opportunity for me to learn. So developing a habit of tracking your numbers and taking action to continue to improve your conversion rates. So when I did the GCI uh, uh, goal setting with some of you, we did talk about conversion rates. So every time you go for an appointment, let's say you have 10 appointments, how many of those appointments can you sign? Like I know my conversion rates were super high for buyers, but they were super low for sellers. So I know that I knew that I had to work on my sellers much, much more. And it wasn't even presenting the material. It's my mindset, like you said, that I, I could do the best job for them, um, that I could provide the most value. I knew that I could work hard, but I always had that inkling in the back of my mind. Could I provide the most value? I mean, I'm only here into the business and I'm doing a $1.5 million home. How could I, how could I think that I can, can provide the most value? So to help you a little bit with that, I think that um, I will go into something that um, is very important for you to know. Um, if you need, you know, help with your, sorry, are you dancing? Yeah. Or yeah. <laughs> um, if you need help with, let's say, a listing presentation, you can tether yourself, if you're not on a team, you can tether yourself with somebody in this office to go on that listening presentation with you. And in the back of your head, in that, in that mindset that you have, you also have to remember that you are standing on the shoulders of giants. And when I say that, you are standing in this office that we have some amazing, amazing agents that will give you their time and their energy and will go to a listing appointment with you should you need them. That was my mistake. I didn't ask. But then I asked after and we landed that listing appointment because I asked. Can you imagine the money in my pocket after that? Do, you know? Um, and so to, to, um, to go into the listing appointment with yourself and just yourself and just your own limited experience when you're first starting out, um, I could always refer to, okay, I've been around the business for a really long time because my mom has been a realtor for a really long time. So I talk about that aspect. I also talk about, you know, the sharing culture of KW and the fact that if I do need help, I can knock on anybody's office and I can truly say that because that's the only kind of relationships that I've experienced to say, hey, I need help with this. So really think about that and know that you're standing on the shoulders of giants and that needs to be able to lift you up as a person and as a professional in order to go in there and win that listing. So commit to a plan for maintaining the powerful habits you've developed in Ignite to reach and exceed your business goals. <clears throat> So we're going to ask you about the mission. Uh, I apologize, it's not the final page. Okay, um, your mission for today, I believe, was to reach out to five people. Is that correct? To reach out to five people. 
to ask. Bear with me, please. We've got lots of papers. I can't speak for everyone, but I don't know what people are following. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, whatever. I'll just speak to it, and I'll yeah. see what you can do. So, in your mission, you were tasked with seeking out five different people and asking them two questions. Uh, <clears throat> the questions are, what is your advice on getting into effective productivity as quickly as possible? And what is your secret to longevity and prosperity in the real estate business? Okay, so the way that I connect this mission is to exactly what I've just told you. Uh, reaching out to five people <coughs> within this brokerage. First of all, you're making connections with your colleagues who you respect. So we've had 11 faculty members besides me to present. Um, all of these people are extremely successful in what they do. Giants. And uh, <laughs> so um, when you, you can do this even next week after this course is done, but I would suggest that you um, call any of the people that you've seen in presentations that you feel like you're most connected to and you ask them things like, what is your advice on getting into effective production as quickly as possible? And what is your secret to longevity and prosperity in the real estate business? So I'm gonna share with you um, my uh, advice into getting uh, into effective production as quickly as possible. Done is better than perfect. That is something that I constantly struggled with until uh, I had my second child, and then I said, <laughs> done is better than perfect. If I go at this pace, I will not do anything. And um, I'll tell you what results it gave me. So, um, when I first started out, I didn't start out with Keller Williams. Didn't have all of the tools and, and, and listing presentation. Um, you know, if you need, if you like somebody's listing presentation or any kind of pamphlet, like you're going to an open house, correct? Um, I did an open house for Julie Panier and I then said to um, Trevor, right? Trevor. Tyler. Why do I call him Trevor all the time? I said to uh, Tyler, I said, um, Tyler, can I please have that pamphlet that you're you're handing out with all of, like when people come to visit, that pamphlet that you put on the just a feature sheet to um, describe the property. And they, they went into the details as far as, you know, how much you pay for heating, how much you pay for hydro. And I thought it was genius. So I called Tyler and, and uh, and I said, hey, can you send it to me? I, and uh, he said, absolutely. So what I did was just switched around a couple of things, and it was done. And it was not perfect, but it was fantastic, and it gave me something to go with, and to show people, and uh, the information in it was wonderful, like it was so useful. It wasn't like to the specs that I really wanted to, but it was done, and it made me feel proud. Another example was I took so long on my listing presentation uh, for my buyers, or not listing presentation, buyer's presentation. So then, um, again, after I had my daughter, I had gone on a buyer's presentation. And I really to that, before before that, it wasn't, they weren't really proper, they weren't really by the book. And then I said, I have this presentation in two weeks, I need to get uh, a buyer's package done for it. I pulled up a buyer's package from a KW um, in, intranet, what you guys have available to you as the marketing, put my face on it, did like little minor adjustments, and it was done. It was imperfect, but it was mine. I could speak to it for an hour in a, in a buyer's presentation, and I got the buyer to literally sign on the second appointment. It was like the most viable book buyer's presentation I've ever had a chance to do. Um, so my other advice for um, getting into production as quickly as possible is pick up the phone and call. As you've heard many times over, and I'm going to say it again, um, doing is better than trying, just like, or wishing. Just do it. 
you, you, you learn by doing, not by thinking about it. That took me a long time to understand because I'm a thinker. Naturally, I'm a thinker, not a doer. I'll dissect every single aspect of it. Go ahead. Uh, I took Quantum Leap recently, mm -hmm. which is uh, it's a course taught by Gary Keller. And it's just about life principles. And they made a point that there isn't really a try. Mm -hmm. When you think about what trying is, it's really just not doing. Because mm -hmm. you can either do it or not do it. Mm -hmm. And if you have to put try, will or won't. Yeah. Yeah. Try is like some awkward kind of limbo in between. But really, if you try, then you didn't do it. Right? That's why I hate. I'm trying. Yeah. Don't try. Just yeah, do just it. Do it. Exactly. Um, yeah. So pick up the uh, the um, the phone and call. One little piece of advice that I will give you um, that I didn't. By doing bold, by doing ignite, I did bold twice, I did ignite twice. Something that I didn't get until I entered this role as team leader. I've been script practicing with uh, you know uh, other team leaders from different things and um, practicing. Pra I'm, say I'm saying yes to them. And this gentleman that I shadow yesterday is like, why are you saying yes? Say no to me. He's like, I'm looking for three objections before I make an appointment with you. And I'm like, okay, so no. So I object to, um, you know, you're a recruiter. Well, no, I'm not a recruiter. So that's the recruiter, right? Um, you're a recruiter. No, I'm not a recruiter. I'm a person of value. I want to be a person of value to you. When you get appointments canceled on you, why did you have them cancel on you? Did you ask the right question about what can I bring, deliver to this appointment of value to you that you will then take with you to, to get what you get done. So when you do meet those appointments, and I know there's a, there's a big script that you guys got, big um, script folder that you all had, look at the objections, because I'm sure that you will find the objections that you've been experiencing either at the door or through phone calls. And expect that you will get up to three objections when you make your phone calls and know how to talk to them. I'm not interested, that's fine, but you're not there. Like, imagine if you were thinking that you were gonna do business with every single person. No, you're there to make a connection, you're there to find out about that person. That's why we have databases, that's why we put things like pets, when they joined, what their favorite color is, what their favorite chocolate is, how long they've been in the neighborhood, right? That's the relationship building part of it. And I think that once you um, once you realize that, that you, uh, you're going to pick up that call, you're not going to get a client. You're going to get an objection. And if you can get through those objections, you will get a client. Another mindset thing that I've also picked up in this role as team leader, um, I was at an, a mega agent panel, which we will bring to this office starting in November, if not uh, January, if not sooner. Um, one of the gentlemen who's a mega agent as well as now a team leader for his team, he does about $113 million in volume, um, in Hamilton, uh, named Sandy, don't know what his last name is, but Sandy something. And he said, you know, he's not a dominant personality. So many of you did your personality assessments and then your D is very high. So you're very like a go-getter type A, loud, assertive, blah, blah, blah. He's a high I, so he's high emotionally and intuitively. He looks for glances, body language, that's what he does. He doesn't exude it, he looks around it and he gets influenced by it. He said, you know what guys, getting no, getting 50 no's before noon, it's invigorating. Because he's not, he's not trying to get to a yes. He knows, he knows a system that, you know, his conversion rate or as many people as, and it really is a system, what do they say? like? Out of 10 people you call, two people you will have a conversation with, right? So it's really getting yeah. those no's. And he said that, and that I was just, I wrote it down on my board. You can see it in my office. I said, getting to 50 no's before noon is invigorating. That's the mindset that you need to have. It's not, oh, I need to get this client. That, that was my mindset when I started. I started, it was much easier for me to make phone calls to friends and tell them I'm in the business than to ask for their business or to call strangers and ask for their business. And the mindset you need around that is that I'm looking for that no. Give me that no. And you need to be excited about it. 
And then when you get to a yes after the three objections, that you know you're doing your job well. Um, and then I would say get a mentor. Um, but get a mentor that is um, someone that you aspire to be, that inspires you. First of all, someone that's better than you, 100%. Because, you know, um, if you, birds of a feather flock together. If all the new people always continue being with the new people, they will not achieve as much as they could or they would if they tethered themselves to somebody great. Somebody like Holly, you would, you know, say, Holly, can I, can I call you maybe once in a while to um, just ask, and she's amazing. Like, Holly would not say no to a phone call. Um, and um, I know I tethered myself to Irene Krasiansky, literally tethered myself. So what I did was, um, uh, I asked Irene, I said, Irene, if there's ever like an open house opportunity, can you please, uh, I know that I'm available and I'll make time to help you out. So one beautiful Sunday afternoon, she says, hey, I'm doing an open house. I think I'll need help because there will be a lot of people coming through. It was a beautiful Sunday. Can you please come out and help me? So during this open house, she showed me exactly her system. So she said, okay, this is, and it is a system. It's not something that she kind of sits at the table and watches people come in. She greets people in the door. She says, here, please sign in to the um, open home app. Is that, is that what it's called? Open Home Pro. Open Home Pro. Pro. Yeah. She doesn't even use the page one. She uses the free version. So she said, please come in. And then she has a series of questions to screen out, first of all, for the neighbors, second of all, for the buyers, so neighbors who are looking to sell and are looking around in their neighborhood, for the buyers who are serious, and for the, you know, just the passers-by who are like things. So we went through the whole open house. I saw her system. I was like, wow, this is exactly, this is what you do? And now, again, going back to shoulders of giants, everybody here will happily have you shadow, means sit quietly, ask questions when they're not busy, sit quietly in an open house, and observe. Observe the conversation, observe how, what their system is for taking and, and, really focusing on selling the house because that's what you're there to do at an open house as well as pick up buyers so after that wonderful sunday experience irene goes to me you know what come to my office tomorrow morning and i will show you what i do with all of this information that i just collected show up at her house on monday morning which was across the street from the house she was selling she says okay I open up my open house pro these are the people who are buyers looking for a house. She puts them in her system, in her CRM system. She, uh, then she writes out, she, she's very big on time scheduling. I'm sure she taught that class this, it's so time blocking. So she says, okay, now I'm writing all of these cards. She puts a sticky note on a card and she puts it in a pile of cards that she has to sign on Friday. And then her assistant will uh, send out those cards on Friday. She doesn't do it like, right there and then writing on all the cards. And then she goes and she's like, okay, and then after I do all the follow-ups from the open house, because then she sends them a follow-up email saying, hi, I met you at this and this open house. I deal with buyers as well. Sends them her package and says, you know, can we meet? And then she follows up, follows up, follows up. Really, that's what she does. Um, so when I say take advantage of these opportunities, go seek them out. Because I think, I don't think people, to me it came naturally. I know I learn best by shadowing, by doing something with somebody. So please go seek them out. I have never had a no, and I've met with the best. So Irene Kushansky, Trish Much, the Provenci brothers. I actually learned my cold calling from sitting by uh, a, a very top producing agent in the Provenci brothers office with their headphones, with their scripting, with their CRM software open, and I got to see how it's done. So that's uh, uh, going into effective production. So I have a question. Well. Yes. Since you went through all these things, so instead of we going to this individual, how about we learn directly from you? 
What? Since you have learned these things, right? Whole calling, door knocking, also the presentation hall. Yeah. So instead of we going individual with this uh, great agents, we yeah. learn from you because you already learned, right? Oh, you want me to teach it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. First of all, <laughs> no, 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 no. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that we won't. If it's a topic that you want to take up and the new agent mastermind, goodness, by all means, which you can tell me, new agent mastermind, we have an hour, we can totally do that. But this is the reason, is because you need to learn many different styles. Uh, you need everybody learns differently. Um, I know how I learn. That's why I, I, uh, what is it? Thought, thought out, sought, sought out all of these shadowing opportunities because I literally told them I need to watch you, um, and then watch them by doing, and then replicate it into my business in the systems that they they do it, and um, uh, and and you wouldn't teach by 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 me telling you. You would teach by you would learn by um, doing, right? You would learn by doing because then they would pull you in. Another thing, you know, when we have those uh, multiple offer situations, right? So Irene also said, Arasta, I'm going to probably have 20 offers on this offer night. Can you please come to the East End to help me out? I said, no problem. So I got to shower her, helping her, but at the same time learning how she conducts a multiple offer situation. So next time I was at a desk on the table and we were exploring strategies of how to sell the home, and I said, well, we might have a multiple offer situation. Are we holding back offers? And I literally knew exactly what I was going to tell that seller because I've been through that. I didn't conduct it, but I knew that I would be able to handle it when it did come around. Leslie, did you have a question? Uh, I wanted to go back to you and ask you, do you send out your buyer presentation in your follow-up email? You mentioned that Irene does. Irene that. does. I did. Right. You don't? No. I don't. I gave it to them in a folder when they leave me. So at your presentation? At my presentation, yeah. Yeah, yeah, at my presentation. Um, it's, it's a choice, yeah. whatever you want. I just wondered if it was, you found it was more effective or? Um, I found me in person, I like being in person more, yeah. Yeah, to me it seems harder to get the appointment. If you send it all up front, then what do they need you for? Yeah. Why do they? To you, you want that one on one with work. Yeah, but um, to present another perspective to that, you're giving them already something of value, mm -hmm. right? So if you're giving something uh, in a package that's of value, and I, I'm happy to go through a buyer's presentation with you, the one that I do, um, really happy to do that, uh, then you have no, like, then they can be like, oh, this person knows so much, I need to find out more what they know. Right. That's all. Because really, if you're if you're just saying that, yeah, if you're just asking for an appointment in that email, just be like, okay, what can I, you know, what can I provide you with? Is there any material that I could send you, like a, uh, a home buyer's uh, tax um, break that you get on a new, new home buyer's purchase? Um, what is your secret to longevity and prosperity in the real estate business? I'm not apt to answer that. <laughs> I've not been uh, uh, in the industry long. But I think that um, if I do speak for the people that I've um, had an opportunity to um, get mentorship from, I think they feed off of their big why a lot. I think they make big plans. And I think they go for them. Uh, anybody wants to comment on that? What they've seen? What what the secret to longevity in in their mentors? Action. Action. Yeah. Constant action. Mm -hmm. Consistent. Like I. Head spinning action. Head spinning action. Head spinning action. Yeah. Uh, it's impressive. Yeah. It's crazy making, but it's impressive. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right? Like it's it's all of those things, but it's a commitment to that one thing. One thing. Yeah. It is. One it's, thing. it's it's quite impressive. So um, speaking more on that that one thing, and 
I will hand out the book. Um, I don't have many copies, but I will get more. Um, so one of the things that the one thing taught me is that I thought enthusiasm and energy were unlimited. If you if you wanted it, then you should have it. Like if oh, like I'm like why why can't I get to this today? You know. Um, and I'm like, I really don't want it because like I, I don't think I don't think I'm serious about it. I'm a lazy person. I'm like, I can't do anything. And you get down on yourself and you're like, this is this is horrible and I know what I have to do, why am I not doing it? So the one thing that that book taught me is that your patience and your enthusiasm in a day are very limited. So you have to channel that energy that you have in that one thing that will get you 80% of your results. And I believe that more than ever, and I have become my mother saying, I don't have patience for you today. <laughs> I've lost my patience. And it never, never made sense to me. I've never <laughs> used that expression on my kids before. But after, after reading that one book, I'm like, it makes sense. I'm like, I'm busy doing so many things. And then, you know, and then it's like, so, if you get, if you get anything out of that book, it's that. When you wake up in the morning, and it's not the only book that says it. I think Brandon Bashar, correct? He also says that. He also teaches it, but in a little bit of a different way than uh, Gary Keller. He also says, you have in your day, you have a very limited window for enthusiasm and all of those energies. Um, what is it? It would be enthusiasm, it would be the drive, it would be um, the mental capacity. Decisions. Yes. To make this, this window work. But you must focus on that window because if you don't, then nothing else matters. Nothing else will go. Okay, so, can I get some ahas for all the talking that I've just done? <laughs> yes. Uh, I came from a different uh, broker, uh -huh. and I think since the day one I came out of the real estate, I had this idea, like, I will uh, prefer to learn by watching somebody doing it. Mm -hmm. Rather than going to read, 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 and watch videos, things like that, that I, that's what I've been doing these past two years. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's not easy for you guys that belong to this brokerage. It's not easy for other agents to say, okay, come, I'll, I'll take you to my open house, or to my listing presentation, I'll show you how to get clients. Nobody wants to do that. I had that feeling. I asked my office many times, does anybody want to take me? <laughs> nobody. In two years, nobody had the time. <laughs> Even friends close, close to me that we have dinner together, I ask them if you ever go to any mystic presentation or anything, allow me to come with you. I, I promise I won't talk. <laughs> no. And that's so important as what you say. I always thought about it like go with somebody who, who knows more than you, who has more experience than you, because you learn by watching, by listening, right? Mm -hmm. I had a business for 20 years. It's, uh, at, uh, car dealership, and I met this amazing person, which he means everything to me. He was an Italian guy, he had, he had his own dealership. So one day I went and asked, I was 20 years old, and I said, you know, I want to open my own dealership. Would you mind to teach me how to do it? And he said, yeah, I'll do it, because you seem to be like you want to really do it. So yeah. he wrote to me in a paper and he explained to me how to do it, and I went and did it, and I had that business for 20 years. But he showed me everything, where to buy, how to sell, what to say, how to fill out the forms. Um, and the rest I learned on the go. Mm -hmm. How to lose money and make it back. <laughs> <laughs> but I did it. And I was I was so thank, thankful to him until now. Like I, when I see him, I said, I mean, yes, it means a lot. And so, it's not easy to find a mentor. So let me ask you this. What if you had another 20-year-old come to you how would you behave towards oh, that 20 year old? I like to teach anything that I know. Right? I, yes, I love to do Right. So, when um, in this industry, there are a lot of agents, many who I've met, that's why I switched to this company, that um, they come from a place of um, scarcity, scarcity, scarcity. 
Um, they, you know, if they have a place of, you know, if I show you, I'm not going to get any. If I show you, I'm not going to get any. And this is something that Ryan, the team leader that I went to shadow yesterday, had to talk about a lot. He had three recruiting appointments, and he said he showed them every time. So let's say in this market, we have 300,000 transactions. 300,000, that's not where the comp goes. And, um, you, in order for you to make $150,000, you need to sell 15 transactions, right? Is there room in this 300,000 for 15 of your transactions for you to make a good living for yourself? Right? Is there room for 35 transactions? Absolutely. This is a place of abundance. This is, yeah, I see you're not. Yeah, no, that makes sense, but yeah. that graphic does not symbolize abundance, right? You're saying that's a finite market. If you change your mindset and say, our population is always growing, transactions are always growing, can I create 15 new transactions that wouldn't have even happened otherwise? That's a good point. With that right. being said, this, for example, one thing that I noticed with other agents, mm -hmm. they're so selfish, right? Yeah. There's 300,000 transactions. Are you going to be able to handle all of them yourself? Exactly. No. Yeah. Because if you have to handle them, I'm not. I've been busy, and with five, seven transactions that I'm doing at the same time, I'm going crazy. Yeah. I'm going nuts with three people, everybody calling at the same time. I'm going. So if you can imagine people doing 15 transactions, it's, a, it's tough to use those 50 transactions a year. Yeah. So if I do 10 or 15, I'll be kind of doing my job every day and and be, be settled in. Have right? a decent income, as you said. So, especially with the mega agents, the ones that I'm asking you to tell yourself to, they don't come from the... If I show you, I'm not going to have. Because at one point, like I read said, and I said, why do you do this? Like, why did you mentor me? She's like, well, at one point, I had a, a, a mentor for 14 years at another brokerage. She was the only kind one to me, and she helped me build my business prior to switching to Keller Williams. And she's like, and I, and I see myself in you to a degree, starting out in the business, you know, wanting to learn, asking for the mentorship and everything that goes with it. Why won't I give back? Do you, okay, so uh, speaking of mindset and energy and all of the good gushy stuff, um, you know how they say if you volunteer, it'll give you tenfold back. If you give, you want, you give tenfold back. And it changes your rhythm and it changes your energy. And I believe that that's a big part of mentorship, and that's, and they know what they're getting. So another part to that is imagine how mentally strong these mega agents need to be to always hit their goals. What she said she was going to do that year, she did it and more. So they believe in all of this mindset. They believe in all this energy and giving back and good energy creating more good energy and mindset and shit and all that stuff. So they come from a place of abundance and they've experienced it, they've experienced the mentorship. And last but not least, they help because they need to recruit people for their teams. Just so you know, in case you're wondering. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Now, in, in Keller Williams, the, this is the concept, like you have to go to the uh, any office to a sponsor. Now, sponsor means, uh, now if the sponsor is like a great agent, and if the sponsor teaches uh, whatever she knows and try to duplicate herself into this new guy with the right brokerage. Now, this guy, new guy, does well, and now this person who sponsored this new guy will have the benefit of right? getting some profit share. Yeah. That is one thing. Second thing, like if you're a mega agent and if you try to help everything to this new guy, and tomorrow if this guy performs well, that means he's either buying or selling. So that means if you have a buyer or if you have a listing, that means you have more chances that this you person can do a deal do together. Yeah. Other, there's a benefit instead mm -hmm. of uh, if you help other, there's a benefit instead of not helping, because I think the chances are there somewhere it comes back to you. I think. I agree. I agree on all those friends. 
for sure. Um, okay, so can I ask what people think about the three objections and no, no, knowing how to get past them? So have you found that when you're calling, you're getting objections and, and you don't know how to talk to them, like to the objections? No? Um, it, it is a, it's a process, a learning process. I, I found, I haven't been on Mojo for a while, but uh, mm -hmm. back when I first started on it, I definitely recognized the it's when I was doing bowl too, so it was like trying to get through the, call, the number of calls as well was the challenge. But I I can reflect back and go, you know, those first few weeks of calling, I definitely couldn't get past the first. I gave up too easy, mm -hmm. and and then as time goes on, you you recognize it's like, oh, I have the answer to that one suddenly. Yeah. And then you get another layer deep, and then. You just keep calling, and, and sure enough, it, it doesn't take that long. And eventually you get the, the right scripts, and mm -hmm. you suddenly have the ability to navigate those three layers. And it's just practice. It's awkward in the beginning, but it's just practice. Mm -hmm. This is practice. And so what they say no? Yeah. Who cares? The crucial part there is keep calling. Keep yeah. calling. Keep calling. Yeah. Just it's keep calling. Really it gets easier. Fail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, that's the biggest thing for me. That was the, the aha. It was like, yeah, I, I'm awkward at this. It sucks. And I'm not enjoying it. Yeah. It's really uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm way out of my comfort zone. Yeah. But that's that's it's, it's getting better. And you're right. That's where growth happens. Mm -hmm. Something I've noticed is that we are our own best friends, but our own worst enemies. And it's often at the time that you need it <laughs> the least. So what I mean by that is um, planning is great. Everyone's pretty good at creating a plan. And the plan's awesome because it's like, yeah, if you just think about the numbers, if I cold call 2,000 people, the stats will show that I'll get this many leads and such and such. And you make a great plan. And then you get down to when you schedule your calling. And then you start to think about it again. And you're like, oh, well. Uh, if I did this and this and, this and this and this, once you make a plan, stop thinking. Mm -hmm. Switch from thinking to action. And just yeah. literally don't think about whether or not you're going to do it. Just do it. Stop the thinking. That makes sense. Yes, absolutely. And I'm going to come back to that later. Um, actually, no, whatever. I'll just do it now. Sorry, Cap, you had something to say? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, just when you mentioned, you know, the mindset and making those phone calls focus on the nose now makes it easier for me because yeah. anticipating calling to get a yes that's what you want but yeah. all of a sudden they say no so go in thinking they're going to say no 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 it makes it so much easier to pick up the phone yeah and call mm -hmm. I'm so glad. right yeah so that's totally. to that's my big awe a breath fresh yeah, air. Exactly. When yeah. they do say yes, it's like, what? what? Uh, well, I will, I will talk about yeah. that too. Uh, right. I will talk about that too. But the mindset, like that is a big awe for me right now. I'm sitting here thinking, wow, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, if I'm going to get a no, I'm ready for it. Yeah. Isn't that perfect? Uh, okay, uh, and um, sorry, I, I love, I need the air, but it's loud, so I need to close it. Um, to add to what you said, there's something that I heard really, really. So, James, you worked on your system. You know your numbers yeah. exactly. You know your goal. You know everything. Yeah. And then you sit down at your desk and you're like, mm, what about those numbers? <laughs> oh, ah, maybe I could tweak them. Maybe tomorrow I can make up for another 20. Maybe tomorrow I can make up for another 30 that I didn't Impressive. do for the last three days. I'm going to give you a phrase that has stuck with me. It says, you do not rise to the level of your goals, but you fall to the level of your systems. And to me, that means you can make your goals as amazing as possible. You can say, I want to sell 24 houses. And I will tell you, of course you can when I do your CGI, GCI goals. And I say, of course you can do that, because you can. 
But that doesn't determine whether you can or not. It's whether, whether will you will or not. Whether you will or not. Because it's really the systems. If you get the systems down, and if you don't question, you just do. Why does Tony Robbins do, do a, an ice bath every single morning? It's because he's like, I, I, I refuse to negotiate with my mind. That's it. I refuse to negotiate with my mind. And this is, um, this is one thing. Say it one more time. This guy? Yes. You do not rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the levels of your systems. So, um, I'll give you that. Who said that? Um, it was on a team leadership call. I don't know who said it. <laughs> I don't know. It makes sense. Yeah. 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 So, um, I'll give you my personal example. Uh, lots of examples, lots of learnings. Um, when I first got into this company, and one of my questions was, um, how much does your you know, top agent make? That was my question to all of the brokerages that I interviewed. I'm looking at you because I know you're exploring, and you should explore. Um, I said, you know, what does your top agent make? And they told me a number. And this office was the top number that I'd heard on what that agent makes. Um, and I was so gung ho about I can make that, I can do it, I can blah blah blah. Let me put a number down, and then they, Rick broke it down for me how many appointments I had to have each month, and I'm like totally doable. And I'm like, okay, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, but I'm not doing it, I'm not doing it. I'm not. Why am I failing? What it was this? Because I didn't know the tools and the systems, and I had this number completely. Realistic to Rick, he, it's not that he misled me. I can do it, but he's like, okay, where's your pipeline? How many uh, appointments are you getting a day? How are you converting those appointments? So, um, before before we get into deeper of what I can share with you from my own personal experience, which you will hopefully learn from, let's uh, let's go <clears throat> into the materials that they here. So, making it happen. Anyone can succeed, but can succeed, but not everyone will. Why? The ones that do succeed have focus, the ability to concentrate their thoughts and actions on the most important tasks. So, how do you create a personal plan and make a process your focus? How do you create a plan? Sorry, and make the process your focus. Not the plan, your focus. The process, your focus. Mm. You need to have a mastermind. You need to have people accountable to what you do. Like your wife or friends. Perfect. Who something like what's your progress. And you should yeah. know your strength and weakness also. What's your strength? And you need to capitalize on those. And weakness, mm -hmm. you need to uh, either form as a mastermind to compromise your weakness or Keep on yes, yes. So, that's the process. Excellent. So, follow a big plan, build from a big model, and make the implementation process my focus. Aim high and don't allow my goals to be a ceiling to my achievement. Do not, do not aim too low so I don't stop trying once I hit my goal. Make the daily, the daily 10 core activities my focus. Time block the daily 10 core activities to protect the time to accomplish these which gives me focus. Uh, how do you time block to get your focus? So, so you're, you just time block, just right? Yeah. You just open up yeah. your Google Calendar and you say, this is my focus today. Now, you might run into some learning um, things from your, from your time blocks. Um, I'll tell you an example. I had a very demanding buyer's client. Uh, buying client and, and um, she was a really good friend of mine but boy was I ready to like give her up to say go to another person uh, because you I'm losing my mind with you 
And um, so I literally, I was having this pro a problem because I found that that was taking up so much of my time, so much of my energy. And every time I would get a text from her, it would be like this anxiety thing that would jump up at me. I'm like, ah, no. Okay. So the solving to that, and, and, and why am I telling you this? Because it was taking so much of my time that my time blocking wasn't working. I would look at my calendar and then I would be doing research in the first two hours on a Monday morning for her and her, you know, her questions and, and kind of um, giving her information, looking at p information that she got from another agent saying, you know, like, what about this? And I'm like, well, no, that's not true. Well, no, this is what you have to look at. I'm the professional, please trust me, blah, blah, blah. And then, I, so I went to Irene, I said, this is stressing me out. How do I deal with this? She's like, time lock it. It's the easiest solution. And I said, what do you mean time lock it? And she's like, you say in your calendar, I have 20 minutes or an hour to answer all of this person's questions. And you send her a text message. You say, hey, I will be, I will have time from three to four to answer all of these questions. So think of any as you can, uh, think of as many as you can Put them in an email, or I can just look at the text message, but I said, put them in an email so that I can have, you can answer them point by point so that you don't, I didn't say that, but so you don't stress me out and then you don't mess with my schedule. So time blocking, protecting your schedule. So time blocking for things like answering questions. You are working on this buyer, right? So on, you have to send this buyer listings and you time block send this buyer listings and this and this time. Answer buyer questions after you send them the, 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 the listings and I'm sure that they have questions. Does this come with this? Does this come with that? Does it have what I have? Blah, blah, blah. So you schedule a thing at the end of your day to, to follow up with their questions so that it gives you a chance to protect that um, time blocking schedule that you've made for lead generation because it will it will bring you the money so you can eat. Um, so did it work out for you? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> so That's simple, right? Oh yes, gosh. like It worked out so well and then I didn't have resentment towards her because I was in control of my time. I no longer gave her an option to be in control of my time. That was so big for me. Yeah. Yeah. You so have big. control. Mm -hmm. So again, what did I use there? I used a mentor that that did. I said, like, this is driving me crazy. I shouldn't be feeling. I shouldn't be feeling this way. She's controlling my time, and I don't know how to get around it. And her answer is two words: time block, and it solved my issue. <laughs> yeah. She said, just just time block. Like I can't. I don't know why. You, it's not so obvious to you. I'm like, but she's. My best friend. She's like, no. You say, you say, you treat she's people how to teach you. She's a client. Yeah, she's a client. You teach people how to treat you, and you say, I'm gonna have this time, and then you don't feel bad for ignoring her all day. That's it. Um, I'm just gonna read this blurb from here. I must practice time blocking and turn it into a key productivity business habit. Time blocking keeps me focused, free of distractions, and doing what I've committed to. I need to take two to four hours of focus effort to accomplish what I need to do. It's important for the people around me to understand that I'm doing and not interrupt me or allow others to interrupt me. The reward from daily and focused time block lead generation is huge. And it is. Okay? Um, how do you use accountability to keep your focus? Who are you accountable to? Do you know who asked to be my accountability partner? My husband. Because That's a what? That's a game. <laughs> totally. My husband is a is a is a type one personality. He's a type A, type one. I said life paths. There's like eleven. Um, he's a number one life path. I'm a seven life path. Um, he's he's very much like cut out the bull. Yes or no. He can't. He can't have a lot of fluff. He just think. and um, when when uh, when I just got into the company and um, I said, "Babe, can you please script practice?" So here I am, thinking that he was going to be, you know, like 
Fluffy. <laughs> oh, it's so fluffy. So I go, I'm like, okay, so I'm gonna read the script. <laughs> and you're the customer, okay? <laughs> so I go to him and I say, hello, my name is Arasta, blah, 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 what do you want? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just a realtor. I'm getting sweats just yeah. thinking about it. I'm a realtor, blah, blah, blah. No. <laughs> and I'm like, Andy, how could you do that to me? I'm trying to practice it. Enough. But to be honest, looking back, the best thing you ever could have done. exactly, <laughs> exactly. And I'm just like, okay, so he's my accountability partner. I know why I picked him as a life partner because he gives me that no bull, just do it. Um, so who is your accountability partner? Who who are you gonna say? And there are a couple of ways. So be, beyond my husband, you know, there there are people in here who are working on their business daily. Like Mariana Pada, I she was my accountability partner at one point <clears throat> because we shared an office, and I found working with her uh, was fantastic. Um, find somebody, I would say, <clears throat> not in this room because you're almost all at you know you're at different levels, but you're just the beginning. Um, I would say our next team meeting or our next agent appreciation night or any of the 11 instructors that were here, see who you can um, involve in your business, learn <coughs> from, shadow, and have as an accountability partner. I could be your accountability partner. I don't mind. You could all be accountable to me uh, because I will be setting your goals with you so I'm very close to uh, your businesses as it is because of the goal setting. What is the objective of an accountability partner? Somebody to say, what's wrong with you? The objective is, is <laughs> yeah, the, the, really. Uh, what are you spinning your wheels on? What are you spilling your wheels on? Yeah. So, uh, first of all, it gives you a time block in your week to talk about your business. So, again, it's working on your business, not working in your business. You'll hear me say that a lot. So, when you have that Monday morning conversation with your accountability partner, saying, okay, what did you do last week? What, did you, what are your goals for this week? Did you accomplish your goals? Um, so it gives you uh, an opportunity of, uh, first of all, discussing your issues. So like my issue was stressed out because my, I have a demanding client and it got solved. Your issue might be, that's why I'm saying, partner up with somebody serious or, or ask for accountability with somebody who does more than you because they might often look at problems from a completely different <coughs> perspective and might get you through that issue. Yeah. Um, long-term focus brings on long-term results and staying focused is difficult. I need to acknowledge the limits of my ability to focus and choose carefully what I need to focus on and then find ways to help maintain that focus at a high level over time. I use the 411 to bring accountability into my business. I also rely on accountability coaches, teams, and partners. Something that I've really uh, been focusing on a lot this year, I find, for my own personal growth and it's helping me in my professional growth are um, mindset books. Like some of them are business books, some of them are books on, but I find that all of them have a common thread, with thread which is uh, mindset. So uh, Brandon Bouchard, um, Jennifer Sincero, Tony Robbins, those are my few latest obsessions. And uh, so, <clears throat> who, who, James, do you know which book? Um, oh, Highly, highly Effective Habits. What, what, what did Brandon Bouchard write? Um, yeah, um, High Performance Habits. High Performance Habits, then You Are a Badass, and Tony Robbins, I just went to his... Um, Power of Success. Power of Success, I was there. So was Yeah? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Even before I knew, right? That was before I would have met you. When did you start here? Oh, August 27th. No, that was in September. Yeah? Yeah, I think it was in the beginning of September. Yeah. It's like the first... The first week I started, I asked for a day off to go to Tony Robbins. So, um, 
what I was talking to. So coaches, accountability coaches, and um, so people who coach you in your business. Um, I think that all of our top agents use some some kind of accountability coach. Uh, we just so you know, I'm also getting a package from uh, KW International of starter packages. So once this office and it's my job as well as I'm going to include you on this, reaches to a certain level, we are going to have a productivity coach that's accessible to everybody. They will be in house, but we have to reach to a certain uh, level. Um, certain level of what? Agents. Of volume of agents? agents? Of agents. Or of volume of sales? Of volume is great. <coughs> number, number of agents. One. Number of agents. This is the number of agents that gets us the productivity. And how far out are we from that? Um, I'd have to double check. We're right now at 79. Um, we're hoping to be at 85 by the end of the year. Okay. Not hoping. We're going to be at 85 There's by no the end try. of the year. There's, There's no, no try. try. Just do. Gosh. Wow, that sounds like a bold class. I just had a realization. Yeah. Because I'm struggling a lot with something. It's like, what's even the point of anything? That sounds really exciting. <laughs> 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 wow. <laughs> but it was. That's a 911 call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or like 411. Uh, what's the point and what, like, I was coming at the whole essence of accountability from the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. it, it's not so much tell somebody what you want to do and then be punished if you don't do it. No, it's got nothing to do with punishment. That doesn't work. It's like, I want to say you're not my mom, but that, I can't say that. <laughs> That's not the objective. And I just have the realization it's you decide what you want to do. And then you decide why you want to do that. And then you create a plan uh, to achieve what you want to achieve. And then you get an accountability partner or an accountability coach and you share your vision and your plan with them. And then when you start to deviate from your plan, it's just a reminder of. This is what you set out to do, and this is why. Because it's really easy to sort of lose your focus or lose lose sight of what you're trying to achieve because it's such a big goal that sometimes you can sort of you know lose your direction. Mm -hmm. And they're there to just be your rails and kind of like push you back in and remind you why you're doing it in the first place. That's perfect. Um, with that, I'm going to run into my office because I have another really important piece of information to share on that. We are eventually going to get to the video. One second. Did you do a Frank Shelby set? Yeah, I did. Good. That's awesome. Bye, That's good. Fantastic. Hopefully I have enough time to do so before I'm gonna we're gonna take like a ten minute break after I present sure. on this and then we're just gonna take these then. Whatever. Is that your journey? It's it's kind of like my workbook. I write down all of the stuff that I have to do and all the meetings and all that just in one place. So I'll tell it to him when he gives back in. Um, but I'm gonna just start um, <clears throat> so to add to what, what he just said. Why get an accountability coach or an accountability partner? So it's, it's a difference between results oriented and system, process, system or process oriented. So when you are results oriented, you have this amazing big goal and you're like, I'm going to sell 24 houses. And again, like I was saying, my big, big dream. And then I'm like, why am I not doing this? Like, this is not happening. Why am I? but I was results oriented. And you have to move to a system process oriented. And a big part of that is thinking of, I've had the conversation and I'm having the conversation. So when you've had a conversation about, oh, my goals are this, this and that, you just had the conversation, you left it, right? When you're saying, I'm having the conversation, you are constantly reminding someone, reminding yourself, holding yourself accountable. Somebody else is holding you accountable. You're continuously having the conversation to keep you focused on the process going towards the goal. So, James, it's just to add to what you just said. Mm -hmm. 
So this is going back to results oriented and uh, system process oriented. So results oriented is that having that big goal, but system and process oriented is having that conversation with your accountability coach, with your uh, account accountability partner. It's, and, and the beautiful example that I was given today um, was when you get married, right? You whoa, say, whoa. no, 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 <laughs> just like, or, you know, when, when you get into a relationship and you say, I love you, right? You say that once and never say it again for the next 30 years, right? <laughs> wow. Right? That's, that's not, because a marriage is process oriented. You have to keep saying it. You have to keep working at it. You have to keep focused on it. You have to do it, live it repeatedly, right? It would not, no marriage would work if you said, I love you One in time. the beginning of the marriage. And then what happened? Well, that's just the result. We got married. I said, I love you. Doesn't that mean anything? You know, you have, it's a process. It's a system. You got to keep working at it. With, over quickly, um, and then we're going to watch a video. So how do you make sure your environment supports your focus? So this is all about moving your business forward. My environment builds me up and, su me up and supports me. I am the gatekeeper to my world and I control environmental issues. Physical environment. I will create a physical environment that is con conducive to productivity. People environment. I will surround myself with people who energize me and who are in synergy with my goals. And how do you maintain your energy and keep your focus? <clears throat> Maintaining long-term focus depends on me staying energized and enthusiastic. Everything I do either adds energy or depletes it from my life. So, um... They say maintaining energy and focus. To gain this type of, type of energy, you have to do these activities. So, to gain um, more spiritual energy, you have to meditate and pray to whatever God or not, or to Mother Earth. Um, you're a badass at making money. It talks a lot about that. So, if you want to read that book, it's fantastic about that. Uh, to gain this type of energy, physical, you must do these activities, exercise and eat right. To gain the emotional energy, you have to hug, kiss and laugh with your family and your loved ones. And to gain this type of energy is mental, plan, plan and calendar. And business, to gain the business energy, you need to lead generate. Um, this to me speaks a lot to the culture that we have at KWNR. It's not just business. It has to be life balance for you. Um, when one area depletes completely, then you have nothing left to give in another. If one takes over completely, then you can't focus on anything. And really, I find that, you know, something that I've discovered as I've matured, um, I'd be like, oh, well, what's the point of, you know, embroidering? Or what's the point of, of going to yoga? But every time I do something for myself, like read a book or um, do something, I'm, I'm currently doing like stockings for my husband, like, like, a, like a stocking thing to put on the thing. And every time I do that kind of like needlepoint work, and then the next day I'm like, I, I can, like my mental, my, my mental clarity is so much better the next day, and I've noticed that. I don't know if it's just me, but I swear that it, those two are directly related. Um, so you have to grow yourself as an, 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 like a, a person. The, the, you know, if you are in a place where you can solely focus on um, your business building, do it. If you have a bunch of things that are keeping you going, try to like make time for each one of them because if you have other people relying on you and family members and you're not you're ignoring them and you're ignoring that side that's never gonna work gotta find time for what's important for you and it's different for everyone uh we're going to watch this video Hi, I'm Linda McKissick, and I'm going to talk to you about an ideal day in the life of a mega agent. First thing in the morning, uh, I have to start with uh, getting up and getting my head right. What I've discovered is if I get... Why, why with your hand or mouth? No, no, no. No, no, no. Okay. Um, I'm going to get up and get my head right. Um, 
no, no, no. They're all like that. Okay. So that's all right. I'm calling in. If I get there, my body will show up. So that typically means getting up in the morning, always exercising, getting the blood flowing. Uh, and second, reading something either spiritual or motivational or listening to an audio tape. Uh, Jim Rohn happens to be my favorite, so he's always uh, in one of my uh, CD players somewhere so that I can plug him in easily. Just listening to people that are inspirational because I think all of us need hope uh, every day to, to go do what we have to do. If we get to the office, the most important thing is because every business is a lead generation business is what does that lead generation look like? For me, because I'm at the seventh level, one of the most important things is what key people do I need to talk with that day? That always pops up first. Do they have what they need to succeed? And then the next thing is, who are the people we need to be doing business with? How have I communicated with them lately? What do I need to do now? Is it a phone call today? Is it a drip campaign? Is it an invitation to something? Looking for how do I communicate with those people that we want to do business with and how do I keep furthering that relationship and moving it along? I've discovered my business energy is highest early in the morning earliest in the day and earliest in the week. So I front load my week, uh, Monday being the most difficult day with all the contacts and all the lead generation that I need to do early in the morning. And that frees me up to have the afternoon to kind of just um, work on plans or projects. Typically what I find is through the week, uh, Monday and Tuesday are heavier and Wednesday and by Thursday and Friday it's pretty more entrepreneurial just off the cuff. And in the evening on Mondays or the through the week is you know, it's always about family because the reason we do what we do is so that we can uh, build a great life and build great memories with our family. So our kids are very important to us. We're very involved. It's what are we going to do as a family? What do we need to do as a family? When's dinner? What, where are we going to go? Or what are we going to eat? And that kind of rejuvenates me. And one of my philosophies is the purpose of business is to find life. And to me, life is all about family. And as a mega agent, your your life might your day might look different. But the key things we have to always remember is certain parts of our day have to look the same. So you might want to think about where's my head? How can I get my head in the right place? And then we always want to remember that every business has to be lead generated. So what does your lead generation look like? Is it earliest in the morning? Is it earliest in the day? Uh, and then we always have to know that somewhere in the day we have to spend that quality time with family because we don't want to be in a business to lose uh, that family. Thanks for watching Kennedy Connect and make it a great day. Hey guys, so what were your hobbies from that? The routine. Some right. of your day has to look the same. Mm -hmm. Do the things day in and day out that you know have an impact on, on your business. Mm -hmm. Another started, voice. Uh, yes. There's a, like, there's a video on art of selling in KV Connect, but I'll try to check the knowledge to find. One more time? There was a video about art of selling something. The art of selling? Yeah, in KV Connect. Uh-huh. But I tried to check it, I'm not able to find the video. Is, is there any video like that? Yeah, there should be. Yeah. Um, we can talk, like you can come to my office and we can try to look for it, or you can go to Chelsea. Chelsea will be able to look at it for you, but for sure. Um, <clears throat> okay, so pearls of wisdom, yeah. Um, knowing, knowing your yourself and when you are most focused, your energy is high, whether it be middle of the week or beginning, early mornings or afternoons. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then doing your hardest, like, I like what she said, front load, yeah. the beginning of the week. Yeah, and I find that a lot of um, agents do that and a lot of team leaders do that. So they front load either their week, their day, or their month um, with their priorities and their lead generation so that they're smoothing. By the time month end is over, they're kind of like just plucking the right fruit from the tree. Mm -hmm. Just right. That's really get smart. it done. Yeah, just get it done. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is the 411 Action Goal Worksheet. Can you pull, uh, put it out in front of you and kind of um, try to go through it? Not try to go through. Right down the <laughs> Try. Yeah. Try. Try. So 411 action plan. So annual, monthly, weekly. So we got four weeks. 
Then we got one monthly and annual rule. So it's really one month four. But if the four one one, you didn't get one. I, I'll get you. I'll get you. <laughs> So what do you suggest starting with the big goal, the year goal? And the yearly goal, exactly. And breaking it down? Exactly. Yeah. So what, yes. Oh, yeah, of course. I have like many more, just they all fell down. Sorry, this is just a formality question. Are we doing this for like the next 365 days or is these goals for the end of 2018? Like January 1 to December? You know what? Yeah. Why don't you do January 2019 goal? Yeah. January. Uh, like the calendar year. Yeah. Of the calendar year. Perfect. Sorry. It makes like, sense. Oh, oh, the sheet. The sheet. Oh, it's right here in front of me. I'm sorry. Oh, so the year. The calendar year. Yeah. And just do the month of January and then fill out what you're going to do in the four weeks in January to get to that goal. That uh, the one you said, uh, um, that cold calling uh, brother, I think they are from some other brokerage. They are, so but they're from Keller Williams. Yeah, so we can no, ask them. Of course, can. Yeah. But I think uh, if, uh, if you have the system, it's run into, but I think from laptop also you can do right calling and all. Yeah, yeah. Because I think they have. Oh, you can do it from. I did it from my laptop. I can. I can help you get set up for it. Or Chelsea can help because she's the technology person in her office. Um, but I can help you because I did the Mojo thing. So you'll just need your phone number, and you need to buy into the system one line or three lines. <clears throat> it is an investment. It's about one hundred and twenty dollars per month. But then it's just like a cold calling system. But you could you you can also give us uh, the uh, postal code that you want to call, and Chelsea will pull the numbers from the system, and then you can dial them. You know, it's it's not like um, it's just you can get more done with a mojo, but it doesn't you know you can do it yourself. So when she, when she pulled it, sorry, to, when she pulled it, what is that? Is it on a spreadsheet or? Yeah, it's on the, it's on like an Excel spreadsheet file, and she sends it to you via uh, email. And that's if we don't have. So just give her the area we want to. Exactly, give the postal code or the area. And, and then we're manually done. Uh, yeah, and you're man manually done. So you use the Mojo, right? You well, I did. It. You did. Yeah. Yes. So you can just. Um, so I certainly have familiarity with it, but the question of whether I will purchase it right now out of the gate is. Yeah. Right now. It's it's a big investment. Yeah. So yeah, just uh, connect with Chelsea. Yeah. No, lists are free. You can what? get you can get those lists for free. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, it's just saying. Laura. Yeah. So yeah. you don't have to use one. Right. Ready? Uh, Chelsea. Chelsea. Chelsea can pull the list oh. of an area if you want. Give her the postal code or an area, like a geographical area. And she will pull the, the list out for you. But I think in the module, it's like a CRM, like you get some leads, you can do everything, I think. Yes. You're absolutely right. 
but it doesn't, but I wouldn't recommend putting your CRM in Mojo because that makes you way too reliable. I never did it in Mojo. I use Mojo. But I exported all of the contacts to another system, and which you can do in our MyPW, only because um, I didn't like the CRM system that Mojo had, even though it was convenient, but I didn't like the interface of it, and I didn't like how to use it, I didn't like using it. So I just did it in my own system. That's it. Uh, do you find these uh, FSVO expired and all in that module? Because I think in the US maybe these things are there. In the US, you, you definitely get more data provided for you, like um, for sale by owners, but uh, your for sale by owners are, um, you can't get them anywhere here. But expires you can do. You can do expired listings that didn't sell. And that's a matter of just, go ahead. On the contract, you have to look at the MLS because the contract after expired. Oh, yeah. Usually it's no. Yeah. So if that, yeah. I don't know what the timeline is for that. Like how long you have to wait for like six, no, six months. months. Six months? Six months. Really? Yeah. Or three. <laughs> three. We don't know. I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head. No, I don't. I don't know. I don't even know how to search for this. But usually, I think it's in the agreement with the seller. Like how long you will put it there is in the agreement that you get with the seller. So yes, it's yes. like and yeah, and it's like yeah. So for a, the, the how you search for the expired, you just instead of you know how you stats new uh, for sale or uh, sorry new blah blah blah, you just you you just search for past listings and you just search for that. Um, that uh, so classification. They real estate, so yeah, you'd have to check against that property as well in the for sale um, thing. So, risk uh, like yes. now, Mojo means I understand like maybe we will get the lease for the people who own home, right? Like, so, they're already sell, so they're planning to get their listing, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what do you think, like? People who stay in apartments, like if I want to focus in an area which is like full of apartments, means there are many people who are renters that stay in it as a rent. So do you, do you think through module I would get their numbers also? No, you won't. Uh, it's impossible to get those numbers, and I'm sorry. Uh, is it possible? Because I don't. Because I talked to I talked to Ben, and he's like, it's impossible. It's impossible to call people without help. Yeah, and then usually yeah, so, people so this is only for home form. Yeah, from yeah. like a, like a building. Well, whatever your phone is listed as according to your provider. So some people now have like, you can list a cell phone as your home line or something, but it, it's, it's starting to happen, but the majority of them are still in lines. Yeah, uh, but uh, for instance, this is something that I was thinking of myself, I'm happy to share it with you. Um, you know, doing mailers, because Ben Greenhill does a lot of mailers. He's a condo expert in Scarlet and Royal York. Oh, sorry, Scarlet and like La Rose. Um, and uh, he just does mailers. He's like, just sold, just listed, just sold, just listed. And people see his face and see his face every every week, every two weeks. He just focuses on those four buildings. He just focuses on that. And he has a fantastic business. Yeah, he's an amazing business. I, I actually talked to Ben about it because I was like, I. When I was working at the front desk, I was like, this is insane. It could yeah. be like, for five weeks, you have a new deal, like, every, every week. Yeah. It was insane. Yeah. So I was like, what are you doing? Who is, who is the guy? Benjamin. Ben Greenhill. Benjamin Greenhill. Benjamin Greenhill. He's from here. Yeah. Here. He's in this office, yeah. I think, like, I don't know if this is crucial, but it definitely helps. Uh, he sort of said, know what you're doing and go there. Like, he lives in Scarlet Road. Yeah. He lives in that building. He's like, I'm there every day. I see people, and I talk to people who live in that community. And yeah. I think that that, if you were to consider, like, the first touch point, mm -hmm. that would be a reason to actually look at that mailer. Yeah. And not just throw it in the garbage. Because when you pick that up, and it has, like, his face or his name on it. It, can, it creates a connection in your mind. Yeah. Because you it's can see like, it before. Find your community, whatever that is, yeah. whether it's your spiritual community or your like we all have something to pull from yeah. mm -hmm. and that's where you go first yeah we're getting involved like i, think I have problem. to meet him i'm really so close to him yeah yeah, yeah for sure i'm sure you've seen his mailers 
I don't think we can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, let's go into discussing this Form 1-1 Goal Action Worksheet. So, does anybody want to share their annual goals? Does anybody want to share their worksheet? James? Do you want me to just read it? Yeah. Go through it? Okay, so, for the year of 2019, I set the goal of 24 closings, or two a month, and a GCI of a quarter of a million, so 250,000. Mm -hmm. um, as a monthly goal, I said 16 appointments and four contracts. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I'm going to focus on the appointments because just based on what I've noticed so far, um, I, I know we talked about this, I still don't get the contract signed until right before I did the Like right as oh, we're submitting really? the offer, that's when I do. At least for leases, so I'll see if that changes. So I, uh, uh, sorry, do you have a comment? I was going to say, how many of those are going to be leases? And how many of those are going to be buys? Are there all? Oh, of these? Yeah. No, so uh, 24 I'm going to push. <laughs> I'm going to gently push this is for and say, buys. why are you focusing on leases? No, no, I'm saying right now. My experience with leases yes. was that I was doing all the contracts at the same time. This is for buys. Okay. This, for 2019. You're not going to get this two, doing two, leases. Well, no, That's I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so 16 <laughs> buyer appointments, right? Buyer. Buyer You're be appointments. Solely focusing on buyers. That's my objective right now. Okay, yeah. excellent. Um, and out of those 16, you want to get four. Yeah. Okay. So let's let's conversion. go. Let's go to your conversion rate, because this is important. Um, the problem was, like, I, I love the idea of conversions, but it's one thing to know an accurate conversion based on past history, and it's another thing to just make one up. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And I don't have one. You don't have one. So the best I can do is... Well, your conversion rate of your leases. I do. It's 100. Exactly. So then why <laughs> set your conversion rate to 25? Because yeah. I want to... <laughs> I want to overshoot my goals. So if I can do more on a monthly and weekly basis than I need to meet my yearly goal, I don't know if that makes sense to anybody else, but so I wouldn't I would like say I would okay, but you see what, what we did like in the beginning? We said not too high and not too low. I don't I think it's a sweet spot. Uh twenty five percent? That's a one to one to four. One to four conversion rate, yeah? One to four. Four to one. Four to one. Four to one conversions. So well, when you say it like that, it's it's not that. But when um, I would say you should do like a two to one. Three to four. Three to four. Three to four. You have the skills. Yeah. And you have the, the shoulders. And you have the shoulders of giants. Yeah. Okay. I think you so, set the bar. Begin. So and you have to go. It's fine. Uh, no, no, that's okay. That's okay. No, no, he's very important for telling his goals. So he should tell the goals. Oh, she so should tell the goals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what you need to make content for. The camera is there. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I didn't put appointments and then just take a closing deal. For, Fantastic. Uh, that is for buying. For buying? Yeah. Okay. So and then for mostly for January, it's like what, about 25 to 30 new contacts, hopefully 10 appointments, five signed contracts, and one closing deal. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. that's my goal for January. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. So, uh, awesome. Good luck with that. <laughs> Very I will. I will. Uh, sorry, you're going to run it. We were talking about, can I just interject yeah. for a second? We were talking about uh, continuing calling sessions. Do you have any interest in that? Continuing mm -hmm. calling sessions. She doesn't come to them anyway. Who? The, do, the you the morning, do you have the morning call sessions? For your Remember? Day? The Zoom call that we were doing in the morning? Yeah. No, I was there. I, I, was, I wasn't there for Tuesday, Wednesday. I was there Thursday. No, I was there. Do you, <laughs> want, do you, want, do you want to keep doing it though? Do you yeah. have interest in keeping to do that? Yeah. I think we were just going to sort of put everyone into one. Well, I want to see how many want to do it, and then maybe we have to have two. I don't know. Because Tyler and I said that we wanted to keep doing it as well. Okay. But there's no sense in just the two of us doing it. Yeah. It's also good to share experience too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so that sometimes we, not only calling, sometimes we come here, spend some hours, discuss our strategy. Thank that you. Is also good. Sorry, guys. Yep. Yeah. You have a card. That's from a, yeah. You can give me, and then we'll figure out as we get this organized. Sorry. Right. No, 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 it's okay. We're in the Facebook group. Okay. Oh, that's a good idea. You can put on that posting on the Facebook group. Yeah. And we'll, we'll make it happen. Huh? You have Facebook, Laura is asking. Oh, yeah. Get to the California Facebook group. California Facebook? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You don't know? Yeah. The California yeah. neighborhood. Okay. We have to add you. Were you, uh, were you in there? Yes, I am. Okay, I'll uh, It's easy to connect. Okay, I'll, I'll search it and I'll add. Okay, bro, happy to meet you. See ya. See ya. Okay, so I just want to go straight to our question. So, how do you guys come up with this? Uh, so, you want to know how many deals or how many contacts you're going to do in a, in a month, right? So, so yeah. So, uh, uh, enter annual goals. So, add. And you, you, you have room for both. You have your contacts and you have deals closing, right? Yeah. So you have X amount of contacts and you want deals closing, this amount of deals closing. I need to close at least 20 deals. Okay. Yeah. But I don't know how many contacts I need to do. Just so it just, no, it's, it's all about the conversations. So um, contacts. Don't focus on deals and contacts. Sorry, uh, this is just in practice. As connected. Yes. So deals and appointments are connected, right? Deals and contacts are not connected. So once you start calling and seeing how many people you can get engaged, and then make two appointments a week. Yeah, two appointments a week. Yeah, two appointments a week. Um, and from that, how many conversions, like what's your conversion rate? If you go on two appointments, are you going to get two or are you going to get one? A week? Yeah. What if I make in a month uh, two? If you're making eight, eight, a month, eight a month, you're going to get two, right? At least two. Like At least two. So, got it. so one to four, a four to one conversion rate, right? Okay. So. Again, quarter of a percent. So the goal it will be make two appointments per week. week, every week, in order to get two deals a month. A month, so exactly. Like achieve by twenty deals in a year. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So I think two appointments. No, so two appointments. <coughs> in order to get two appointments, I need to pick two. D yeah, the, the that I, I don't have for you. You just gotta start calling to see how many people. Um, that you can uh, get on the phone and get interested in talking. Well, anyway, we have here like what calling ten people a what a day a week? No, no per day. <laughs> Call ten mates week one. What, what is, is it? Ten the sample. Mets. So no, that's for follow ups. That's for ten mm -hmm. mets. So that's for like people that you have in your database that you it's all, that they're already a warm lead. They said that they were gonna sell in. One to two years, and you're just following up with them, saying, "Hey, how's it going? Um, I know we spoke. Um, just wanted to see if you have any questions about the market. Not and sure. um, how is your plan? Do you still plan on selling? At blah blah blah. And you're like, well, you know, my my plan is not. But why don't we? Why don't I sit you down for an appointment so you know what you'll need to do and what the timelines are for selling? If let's say whatever, you just you're just trying to get an appointment with them." Because you never know. They always say that, oh, I'm not looking, a uh, perfect example, I'm not looking to sell till May. Okay, so I call him in March. Actually. Yeah, I call him in March. He's like, oh, I was just about to call you. I'm like, well, I'm glad that I beat you to it. And then we got an appointment. Do you know what I mean? Um, okay, so, and then weekly goals. I just want to go over the weekly goals, and then I want to share my failures with you so that you can learn from them and then uh, make something better out of it. Because those are failures that I was like, just hitting my head against the wall. Why did I let that happen? Okay, so enter weekly goals, preview 10 properties. So the um, when Daniela sends you, these are the open houses for today. You pick the, two, the, the open houses that you want in your farm area and go see them, go see them. Meet the agent that's on the other side. This will give you two things. Take the agent's card and give it to me so I can grow <laughs> your profit tree. I have a lot of cards. Amazing. I have a stack of stuff to give you. Amazing. 
Amazing. It's genius. Genius. Okay? You got it. You, so you you give those to me and I can hold you accountable. <laughs> so <laughs> that I can I can do I can do your passive income part while you're doing your your active income. While you're making my your life to fund your life, I'm gonna build, find your dreams with your passive income. I get a little wow. cards when I do the the receipts. Mm -hmm. Everyone leaves the card there. Amazing. Yes, there you go. Yeah. Um so <laughs> for you test for so that's just per week, right? So ten cards per week. week. <laughs> so that's ten cards per week, right? Yeah. So for you, just to give you an this is my plug for my role as team leader, for you to get thirty thousand dollars in passive income from your profit tree, you need to give me one name every week. Out of that one name every week, I have to hire one person a month. My conversion rate is also four to one. So that's my goal. That's what I need to attain. Um, so when you give me 12 first level contacts for your profit tree, so that means cappers, somebody who will make 75000 in cap for that 22000 in our brokerage, you will get $30,000 in passive income per year. So how many, sorry, is that, so 12 agents then? 12, 12 agents. Cappers. Yeah, 12 cappers. Yeah, you need 12 cappers. under me. 12 you need cappers 12 for 30,000? First level. Yeah. That's just first level. When they get first them. level. Yes. And you earn 30,000 a year. 30,000 a year, baby. I love this company. 30,000 a year. Exactly. <laughs> Guys, and also there's such a thing called as a disappearing cap. Do you understand what that What's is? That? Oh, well, for every capper you introduce to me in your first year, we take 25% off of the 22000 that you don't have to pay for this company in your year. 25%? 25%. So, so just a year. For just, so your first year here, right? Like, you're, you've just started as an individual. You so I have started. 365 days, you're telling me. You have 365 days. To get me to build me a relationship with four cappers, so people who make like you need four people for me. Yeah, are and all people I'm gonna give you. And the twenty-two thousand dollars, it goes away. Okay. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Like, I don't need clients anymore. Game on. <laughs> I heard like, you that's, for you, that's for you. What, that's for you. That's for you. Uh, so it's called the disappearing cap. So this is something that was rolled out by. But that's sorry, just to confirm that f you need four people a year if you want to erase your cap every year. Every year, or is it your first year? It's going to be the first year for now. I'm hoping that they will continue it, keep it going. Sure but it look at this: if you get four people under you, first level people in this first year. Every person that's a capper is worth two thousand seven hundred and fifty dollars. So they must cap. They must cap. They well, must. No, no, no. They don't. They don't have to cap. I just I, have to get four people in. Yes, with the history of capping. So I look at their numbers because I have a, a thing okay. table from IMS, and I say, okay, this agent has been. Um, producing consistently for the last two, three years. Yep. So you get 25% off of your cap okay. until the cap disappears okay. with four agents. Then that's fine. Oh, so, yes, so. was my next question. Yeah. I already have somebody in my downstream, but they're, they went to Irene's office. That's fine. So that doesn't matter. But so she's a brand new agent. Oh, okay. So that's, no, she's no, not no. going to impact this. No, she's not going to impact this. So that's, that's, that's the piece of work. They said, okay, based on that person past performance, you're saying you need the cap. But how about a new yeah. person can also get a cap? Right? Yeah, and she will eventually, but she's just starting. Uh, yes, right. but your benefit from a new person getting a cap, because we can't take away from your 22000 unless we have some kind of guarantee, because we're giving you a financial reward for that right away, right. as soon as they join the company, yeah. right? So, but your financial reward from somebody new joining and getting that cap is when they get that cap, you get that, that result. Do you know what I mean? Ooh. So uh, I have one more question. Like yes. Uh, you uh, you work from Monday to Friday, and <laughs> Tuesday is your off, right? Yes. So most of the time you're in the office. I'm in the office a lot of the time. Uh -huh. I 
what, what I'm going to be doing right now is doing a lot of shadowing. So that's when I'm away from the office is when I'm training. Okay. I'm on appointments. Usually I'll take my appointments here, but sometimes I have to go because an agent from a competing broker doesn't want to be seen in our brokerage. So I have to meet them at like a coffee shop or whatever. Okay. Um, so that's when I'm not in the office, but I'm always accessible via email. So just, just a little bit of recap. We're almost done. Like you guys take this home, you work on it. I'm going to explain a few more things, but I really want to make sure that you know my role in this brokerage. My role in this brokerage is to help you grow your business. It's not the upkeep of the office. It's not making the office look pretty. It's to provide you with the training and the tools both inside and out to make sure that you are, first of all, you know where you are. You know what your strengths and weaknesses are. That's what we do the um, Keller personality assessment or the DISC, which I will send to the people who didn't do the DISC. Did you do the disc last night? Oh, yeah. I've done both. PPA and the disc. Okay. I've done the. Who hasn't done any kind of personality? Uh, Kathy, you haven't done it? Okay. I've got great personality. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so, so um, the point of that is, is to see where your strengths lie and right. where your weaknesses lie. Right. So when you are, there's your natural way of doing things, and then there's the way that you're going to default, sorry, yeah, that you're going to default to when things aren't going your way, the entrepreneurial way. Um, so, and then I get a printout report to see what courses you should be taking. Like literally, it's just right there. It's me for like reading, reading it out to you and saying, okay, you need to do this, you need to learn this because you, your natural strength is in this area. And you will not do well if you default to your natural strengths in this area. That's why you seek this training. From then on, then it's my job to give you the tools that you need. So if you're saying, I need mentorship with this. My, my, I'm not a mentor. I'm not a productivity coach. But if you come to me and say, oh, I need help with this. I'm really struggling. I say, okay, this is what you need to do. One, two, three. Talk to this person. Take this course and go do this in your business. That's what my, my role is. And your role to, oh, and, and my, my other role is, is I'm literally a full-time person that the company provides to build your passive income. That's, that's a big, big part of my job. Big. So that if you introduce people to me and they become successful agents, which in our company they have a fantastic, um, they have a fantastic chance of becoming. Fantastic. And they don't have to be in this office. They don't they have to come to this to office. They can be go to any any office. office. Any their friend is yeah. in Hamilton. Yeah, she she like she advised me. Yeah, her friend is in Hamilton. So she's sponsoring. Yeah, yeah she, she's she's the sponsor. And when you do bring up a person that that you sponsored, it's not like they're tethered to you, because you're both new. You can't be tethered to each other. It's blind leading blind, right? So it's the office, it's me as leadership, it's Melissa as leadership, it's the girls there, it's the, the broker or record that need to lift this person up and bring them into the production or make their dreams come true. So if they are already a top producing agent and they want to take their business to the next level and we have the millionaire real estate um, agent book and we have the systems and models and Julie and Trish and, and uh, Lizanne and all the teams that we have in the office already use that model. We need to be able to translate it into this agent that wants to be a mega agent and give them the tools to build that. So that's so that's for new agents as well as cappers and mega agents. Can you speak to the uh, additional levels of your of the caps? And what does that do? So first oh additional levels Well there can account. be like so Let's say my first gal brings in someone else under her. Oh yeah. Talk about so, that. Oh yeah. So <laughs> um, I can give you the exact breakdown actually. I would like to know. The that. percentile breakdown? Yeah. I can totally do that for you. Uh, from my memory, it's like this. 50%, 10%, 5, 5, 5, 10, 12 and a half. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, <laughs> I, I will okay. actually, I hope that adds up to me. But anyways, I can actually print that out for you, and if you, when you're interested. Uh, Orissa, yeah. I believe, but I need some information last time I spoke with Marion. Yeah. About, uh, international, this one. Uh, Melissa, uh, Melissa, or who? Melissa, Mariana, mm -hmm. Marion. Mariana. Mariana. Mariana, okay. Yeah, because she said, uh, someone told me the agreement only she did this uh, 
opening uh, first, she's the person who opened some uh, televisions in some other countries. Okay, yeah. I'm thinking about something like that. So since you said profit, uh, this one free now, mm -hmm. and it also comes out of that. Absolutely. And if you give me a time, then I will come and discuss. Like, if you have any yeah, like, uh, sounds good. So next Tuesday, I think, at 9 a.m., I have a conference. Just email me, please. And then I'll and then I'll send out a meeting to you to see, to see if we can make it. Sure. Thank you. So thank you. Thank you. Um, so guys, thank I hope you uh, see you. See you too. Care. So um, if you have any questions, please email me with regards to anything really. Uh, we are all here employed by you. We're all in this together. <laughs> But we are here employed by you. You pay our salaries. It is our job to make you as profitable because if you don't make money, we don't make money, right? We don't, that's the point. Um, and uh, I hope you feel that. I hope that the biggest thing I wanted to relate to you today is meet other agents and ask them for help. Talk about your business, talk about your plan, talk about your process, talk about your goals. Because something that seems like a mountain to you may seem like a little foothill for somebody else, and they can get help you get over it. Yeah, they can easily fast track you over something that you don't even you're stressing yeah. about. Yeah. And you can't get your head around, and somebody else has already got figured out. Exactly. Can I? Do you guys have patience for another like five minutes? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So I just wanted to tell you about a little bit of my failures where I completely dropped the ball, and I just I'm telling you this because I don't want you to do the same thing. Um. So I, I actually got pretty good at calling. Um, I got pretty good at, really good at uh, actually buyers, working with buyers. I love working with buyers, customer service. So my, my I is definitely bigger than my D. Um, so my, uh, my, I'm not a type A, I'm more of like a intuitive kind of uh, person. I, I tend to read a lot of people's emotions and, and things like that. Um, and uh, um, when I was calling, I actually got like a pretty good database going. And the things that I dropped the ball on was, one lady to me said, I called around an open house. She said, you know what, yeah, I'm in this neighborhood, I'm looking for, um, you know, I'm looking to move out into Mimico. I'm like, oh, I have a listing coming up there as well. And blah, 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 and you know, but this neighborhood really, my husband died. Filter through all of that, this lady was looking for a real job. She didn't know when she was going to make the move or what, but she didn't have one. That I knew for sure. When you know that somebody doesn't have a realtor and their head is in real estate, like I'm thinking, so things like I'm a thinking, blah, 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 blah. So I said, okay, no problem. I'm going to send you an invite to my open house. I'm going to bring it to you personally. My open house is next weekend. Um, so I think I spoke with her on a Friday, next Thursday, because it wasn't the, the open house wasn't this weekend; it was the weekend after. And I told her that next, the the weekend the, that weekend had gone, and I come back on a Thursday, well in advance of the Saturday's open house, to give her my card. And I see so much activity in the house, and I say, "What's happening?" She's like, "Well, actually, on the weekend, I went to see." And a condo in Mimico, and I bought it with the person that, with the agent the that was selling agent. it, with the list, listing agent that was selling it. Wow. And now that listing agent is selling my house. I was devastated. I literally came into my car and I cried. I said, Why? And it was a huge learning opportunity. I said, why am I such an idiot when that lady told me that, oh, I'm thinking, this is what I'm thinking. She told me her life story. Clearly, she trusted me over the phone to, to tell me her life story. When you get a phone call like that, you jet to that person's house and you give them your card and you make an appointment with them so they can meet with you to talk business, especially before a weekend. Okay, that was one lesson. Lesson number two. Sorry, that's, yeah. Um, lesson number two was, um, what was that other lesson? Um, never give up. So when somebody, unless somebody says, don't call me, um, I hate you, you provide nothing of value, 
but you know they're selling. You know that they're looking. You know you keep calling them. You call them about mundane things. You say uh, not mundane things. You you call them with a point, but not like with any pressure. Just be like, you know, I'm here. I'm here. Now, also ask for the appointment. Another missed opportunity that I had, and 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 waste of time that I had was. I would call these people who I knew that they would list eventually, and then I would I wouldn't ask for the appointment. I'd be like, okay, I'll call you back. I'll call you back to see how you're doing in a month. I'll call you back to see. And they thought I was great, but I didn't ask for the appointment. And eventually they said, you know what? We're gonna leave it for another year. And then I felt deflated, and then I felt so stupid that I didn't ask for the appointment. I got my car and blah blah blah. Cow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, act on your opportunities right away, especially before a weekend. Um, so follow follow up right away. Um, ask for the appointment, and the third one is follow up, follow up until they tell you that they hate you. Okay, <laughs> follow up. Don't give up. And I'm telling you, the only the only way that you should ever give up on a person that you know is going to trade in real estate in the next one, two, three, four years is if they literally say, I hate you, I don't want ever want to see your face, I will never take an appointment with you again. I'm mean, gonna get a restraining order against you. There you go. Okay. That's when you know you've done your job, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. you said, Hold yeah. Up. Hold up. Don't give up on what else did you say? And uh, act on your opportunities right away. Don't wait. Like, yeah. Um, opportunity <laughs> can be very subjective. I just say ask for what you want. Ask for what you want. But what if you, yeah, so sure. if you did go that weekend, it, she probably wouldn't have found that condo. Like, she just went on her own. I, I'm just thinking. She went with her brother in law. Oh. So okay. if I went that weekend, right, if right. I went on the Friday to give her a card, she didn't live too far away from me. Right. She would have had a conversation. She would have had my card and she would have said, hey, this is my realtor. I'm going to call you with her because she would have had my card. And right. I would have said, I would I would represent you in your best interests. I'm going right. to tell you what to look out for. That would have been two, I, I would have made two deals with just that one conversation. Yeah, so even if, okay, so giving her the card and everything, she would have had it with her, whether she went to open houses or not. Yeah. She was ready, she had someone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you one tell you experience that was going to happen to me. Now it doesn't hurt me as much as the first time. Yeah, yeah. But uh, just around my block, what I leave, um, uh, the neighbors talk about like they know I'm a real estate agent, I'm a single mom, I was walking my daughter around. So everybody supports me because I'm the real estate agent there, right? It was like, no, yeah, the next door neighbors moving out, mm -hmm. putting the mom in the old age house, mm -hmm. go talk to her. I don't know, I don't do door knocking. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but I don't do it. So I went there and knocked on her door, and she was never home because she, was, she doesn't live there. Mm -hmm. I passed by, passed by, and Finally, I met her, and I told her she was uh, thinking to sell the house. She goes, "Who told you I'm, I'm thinking of selling the house?" Mm -hmm. With this look, like, yeah. Well, for you think I was just passing by, and I'm just, you know, mm -hmm. you know, I'm at the stage, and I'm sometimes, from time to time, I go or nothing. Okay, and she goes, "Well, if I decide to sell my house, you know, I'll call. I know where you live, just three houses down the street. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, then I'll pass by and drop off like a listing." Whenever it came on the market or uh, anything, so I would just leave my mailbox and say, okay, and I'd write a little note. So yeah. I, was, I was here and just, you know, I want to give you a note. Perfect, note. yeah. After a month and a half, mm -hmm. I see the sign. That's so hurtful. I know. I, I saw a sign and I thought, maybe I didn't create any connection with her. Yeah. Like, uh, even though we're neighbors, I have made. Uh, barbecues, parties at my house. I always do events at my, at my place, and she was coming with her mother those day, those years. Okay, mm -hmm. but she decided to choose somebody else. Mm -hmm. So I guess from which office? Your old office. This. Keller Williams. Yeah. It was Joshua, wasn't it? Who was it? <laughs> Roberta. Roberta Bandera. Yeah. Yeah, the one of Cordella, and I was like. Why did she choose somebody else? I live here. She knows who I am. I talk to her. I love her mom. Why would she go to Oh my gosh. Oh, it's so hurtful. I, yeah. I had my neighbors do the same thing. But you know what? This is, this is 
it's a takeaway. It was what I would advise you to do. Plant in your head, say, listen, give me a listing appointment. If you're going to interview everyone, I know that you probably have a list of people that, to choose from. I want to present my value to you, and I want that listing appointment. I did the same thing. I didn't ask. Yeah. I didn't ask. But I this didn't. one I didn't, but somebody else also I did ask. Yes. He said he has somebody and I said, would you give me the chance to come over and you know show me what I can do for you? Yeah. He goes, yeah, sure. I come tomorrow. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll call. Okay, I'm ready to go. He goes, how can you come after tomorrow? And then when I figured out, he already list the house. He didn't want to list it. And he lost it. I, he list the house for less money than what is really worth it. Like I know, I, I'm there all the time. I know. You know sometimes, sometimes the the people they sell there, like the cause the like where I had a friend, uh, uh, an agent, a really uh, an agent offered her like um, the contract of six months, beautiful, like uh, okay, like music. another one. She was very confident that she was selling her house and she yeah. was very successful, and she didn't offer the the contract for six months. She said, I'm selling it when I'm selling it. I'm confident that I will sell it. So for this, I don't need like to have a contract with you. You can, like, even with without contract, she was more free, like, to, to dump her anytime. Yeah. My friend said, no, but the other one with contract was more like, more trustable because she has a contract. Of course. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. That's get over your contract fears. <laughs> yeah. So how long do contracts normally? Six months. Six months. Six months. Six months. Yeah. Six months. Yeah. 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 I'm glad you had that experience. I'm glad you can talk yeah. about that. Because now you won't you won't uh, feel bad about asking for your experience. Yeah. Yeah. Can you go up? Well, yes, yes. Are you gonna spot it? Do I need to bring it back? No. No? Oh, fantastic. Who wants the book? Oh, I have this one. You gave yeah. it to me. Yeah, I did give it to you. I was thinking like uh, something like I have your daughter read it to you. It's really good. Yeah? yeah. Oh, that is great. Thank you. Oh, you're Thank welcome. You. Thank you, guys. I hope you got a lot of this. I have this one here. You'll be surprised. Thanks, Leslie. Oh, you'll be surprised? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I